Sometimes LEGO sets are better the second time around. When LEGO uncovers a bad design, factory error, or faulty brick, they have no choice but to go redesign the set, even if it's already released to the public. This has resulted in some very peculiar, better late than never moments. Back in 2015, LEGO released their newest ideas project, WALL-E. Based on the now iconic Pixar film, this set was actually designed and pitched by Angus McLean, the movie's directing animator. If anyone could bring this cute little robot to life, it was definitely him. And when the set launched, it came with 677 pieces and faithfully recreated every detail of the character in glorious plastic bricks. When this set was first announced, people couldn't wait to get their hands on it, and the internet was in full hype mode. The official LEGO description of the set claimed that, quote, it has taken almost a decade to perfect the LEGO version However, right as the set was about to launch, an issue was discovered. It seems that there was an issue with some of the hinges holding the head in place, and the set had to be partially redesigned, resulting in it being delayed about two weeks to many store shelves. As the very first shipments were finally going out, it became clear that whatever redesign had been done before launch hadn't been enough. Wally's head, complete with those big, expressive eyes, was perhaps a bit too loose. Several early reviews of the set specifically mentioned the problem. It seemed that the joints holding the head, while incredibly secure, didn't have nearly enough friction to hold up the head in place. Forums and review sites were quickly flooded with people asking if they'd made some mistake in the construction, as even the smallest bump would cause Wally's head to rotate backwards 180 degrees and tip over. Although many people were quick to find their own workarounds to the problem, LEGO wasn't about to let this problem go unanswered. They quickly recalled any unsold Wally units, causing further delays for many customers before shipping back out fixed models. But what about the people who had already bought the set? Well, anyone who had purchased a defective model from the LEGO website was automatically sent a small package containing a few new parts and a small instruction manual. The bag contained fewer than a dozen small parts, but it was more than enough to fix the problem. So what was the solution? Well, if you take a look at the original neck, you can see that the head is held up by a ratchet joint. The issue, though, is that the peg on top of the ratchet joint has almost zero friction, meaning that nothing was keeping the head from simply spinning around. The new set contained a simple ball and socket joint, which was able to provide support, flexibility, and the friction needed to keep the head in place, all without altering the look of the final model. The third time really was the charm, and this design of Wally -E was its final form. The redesign managed to even require one fewer piece, reducing the set's total count to 676. Now, while this might be the most famous LEGO redesign, it certainly wasn't the first or last time that the company would have to redesign a set. They've been doing it since the 1960s, when they replaced several 2x2 and 2x4 plates in the motorized train set back in the day. But there have been several more recent and more extensive redesigns since then. Over the last several decades, LEGO has redesigned more than 100 sets. Most of these are quiet changes that are rolled out between shipments and contain minor changes aimed at increasing a build's overall stability. One example of this is set number 8097, Slave 1. Released in 2010 to commemorate the 30th anniversary of The Empire Strikes Back, this legendary ship came with 573 pieces and 4 minifigures. Most reviewers praised the set, but a few people complained that it was a bit unstable and that the wings were prone to breaking off. Nothing major, but for a set built with play in mind, stability is always nice. LEGO heard what people were saying and soon began shipping models with four fewer pieces but aimed at creating a more durable build. Looking at this step here, you can see that the new version on the left is certainly going to hold together better than the original version. Again, these changes aren't noticeable in the final build and don't change all that much, but sometimes a redesign is so extreme that it leads to an entirely new set. When the Space Shuttle Adventure set released in 2010, reviewers nearly unanimously praised its detail and appearance, but many people found that the construction, especially the large brown fuel tank, had a tendency to break apart if it moved improperly. While this set was mostly intended as a display piece, keeping it together is still a priority for LEGO. While sets like WALL-E and Slave 1 both reduced the total number of parts in their new versions, the new version of this set, now named the Space Expedition, actually added 26 pieces, which brought the total from 1,204 to 1,230 pieces in this set. But looking at the set images side by side, it's hard to see where any changes were made. Taking a look through the instructions for the two sets, you can see just how many extra pieces were added to the fuel tank to help it stay together better. Some of these techniques would go on to help LEGO with their design of the Saturn V to keep itself together. Now, of course, not every redesign that LEGO does is because of a poor original model. 
Sometimes LEGO has to make changes based on how people are playing with the set. One example is this LEGO Speed Champion set of the Ferrari and Development Center. This 494-piece set rolled onto store shelves back in 2017 and featured a lot of play elements, including this functional car lift. Like many of the sets in this line, the Ferrari Workshop made heavy use of Technic parts, and that's where the very minor issue could occur. The original set used a 12-tooth gear and a 36-tooth gear to move the lift, but this combination actually allowed people to move it up and down a little too fast, uh, causing the set to fall apart. By the time that LEGO released the second batch of these sets to the public, these had been replaced by two 24-tooth gears and a yellow half-width spacer, effectively reducing the speed the mechanism could be cranked. I've always thought this was a cool set, though. You can check the description to view the price or purchase this set using YouTube's shopping feature. Another example of LEGO saving customers from themselves can be found in set number 8898, The Wreckage Road, from 2010's World Racers series. The red car has a hidden trick up its sleeve and can launch several little grappling hook pieces behind itself to throw off any pursuers, kind of like Mario Kart. The original used a rubber band to automatically launch the projectiles when the lever was pressed. However, LEGO received complaints that these were being sent flying with way too much force. Now, these weren't barreling through the sky at dangerous speeds or anything, but they were flying across the room and getting lost. And of course, as you probably know, lost LEGO bricks equals probably getting stepped on. These little grappling hook pieces are pretty pointy and also quite easy to break, so this was a one-two punch and the design was quickly changed to also save customers' feet. The new version removed the rubber band, requiring someone to manually flip the lever to launch the hooks. Certainly safer, but at what cost? Moving on to the next set, one of the most ambitious redesigns that LEGO has pulled off was set 79104, the Shell Razor Street Chase from the Ninja Turtles line back in 2013. The original version of this set shipped with 599 pieces, including a base built out of several components from LEGO trains. This train base version was meant to work with LEGO City train tracks, but the resulting build was largely unstable, and the added functionality of combining with train tracks simply just wasn't enough of a selling point to keep the design. Shortly after the set's release, LEGO decided to update the design by bringing in a design that made heavier use of Technic pieces. While the end result is once again visually identical, the increase in durability added 37 new pieces to the set. Now, at the opposite end of the spectrum, we've got another vehicle, but this one received only a very minor update. When this LEGO Mini Cooper set was released, the front and rear windows were each 3x10 clear windows. After a bit of time, however, it seems that someone at LEGO must have realized that the windows were actually sticking out into the car by a stud. No one noticed because it did follow the given instructions and was virtually unnoticeable in the final build. Well, nonetheless, soon people started to get boxes that contained instructions showing the original windows but contained a slightly different set of pieces. These were brand new, never before seen 2x10 dimensions windows. Being slightly confused, many individuals turned to the internet to find a quick explanation that these were created to better complete the look that LEGO was going for. Unlike many other sets that have been redesigned, the piece count for this one stayed exactly the same at 1077 as there were no other changes needed to fit the new windshields. Truly an elegant solution. Now, at the end of the day, the overwhelming majority of LEGO's redesigns haven't been anywhere this extensive. It's almost always by just adding an extra hinge piece or changing the type of Technic pin or just swapping a couple 2x2s for 2x4s. LEGO does a fantastic job designing their sets, and the review process can take years for sets. If you're interested in learning more about how LEGO sets are designed, check out some of my other videos that are linked in the description. But even with all the time in the world to test, tweak, and rework, there's simply no better test of a set's durability than contact with its customers. What do you think? Have you ever found a LEGO set that you felt could use a few tweaks? Let me know in the comments, and be sure to check out this video where I talk about valuable LEGO misprints. If you enjoyed, please support this video with a like, and subscribe to my channel for more LEGO videos.